Ah, les presento a Jeremy Roche. Ah, tenían que hacer la presentación con Tomás uh, Parisot, pero por problemas no ha podido venir y la hará Jeremy. ¿Vale? Tenían preparada la presentación en español, ah, pero lo hará en inglés porque él sabe español, pero bueno, la prefiere en inglés. ¿Vale? O sea que sí, puedes pasar. Um, él nos hablará sobre los desafíos de las editoriales francesas. A ver, uh, me gustaría mucho hacer mi presentación en, uh, en español, pero yo sé que no hablo suficientemente, suficientemente y entonces creo que es mejor para mí y para ustedes si yo hablo inglés. Uh, si hay preguntas uh, después, mi presentación puede pedirlas en, en español y yo voy a responder en inglés. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you a little presentation today, just a few minutes, to tell you a little bit about uh, the challenges uh, being faced by French language academic publishers in social sciences and humanities. Uh, and I will first tell you a little bit about the publishing landscape uh, in, in France, the academic publishing landscape in France, tell you what CERN is, the, 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 the platform, the company that I work for, and then give you in a couple of slides an overview of uh, a, a platform that we've put together, that we've developed to address the, one of the main challenges faced by French language, francophone academic publishers uh, in today's world, and that is the challenge of visibility. How can they remain visible in a world, in an academic world where English has become the default first or second language of, of research and education? Uh, to, 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 to start by giving you a little bit of context, uh, the French academic publishing market is very small and Cairn is specifically, uh, was specifically created by uh, publishers in social sciences and humanities, so it's an even smaller uh, market. And there are a few what we call large publishing houses, but if you compare them to the big multinational scientific academic publishers, they're very, very small. And actually the majority of actors, of publishers in, in the French academic, um, French academic publishing landscape are very, very small structures. Uh, sometimes we're talking about, you know, one or two people sitting in an office that publish one issue of their journal every year. And there's quite a lot of diversity. There are what we call public publishers. So they're, they're, they're going to be publishers uh, who are linked to the research part of a university or to a specific research, a publicly funded research lab in France. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have uh, publishers who are private so that belong to the editorial boards or belong to uh, a bigger group of, of, of publishers. And, well, the transition from print publishing to online publishing took a bit of time. Uh, Kern was a platform that was founded 10 years ago. Uh, and the reason why the transition to electronic publishing took a long time is because not a, there was no big actor that had the, the money or the, the capacity to develop their own online platform, unlike what you saw, for example, with bigger, ac bigger academic publishers, multinational academic publishers. And so the guiding principle for, uh, for Kern was that you know, by grouping together, those publishers would be stronger, and that's why they launched the platform uh, Kern in 2005. And it was originally funded by four of the bigger academic publishers in France, in, Fr <coughs> in France, and they were quickly joined by other, those small publishers that I talked about that really saw that the, this mutual project had a lot of benefits. And the collection of journals, 
uh, and then subsequently ebooks has grown quite a lot in the past 10 years. And today, with approximately 440 journals and a little bit over 5,000 ebooks, we feel that we've really covered sort of the main fields and the main publishers in social sciences and, uh, and humanities in, uh, in France. And we're very lucky to, to have quite a unique platform that is very well known in, uh, in the French speaking world. Uh, and we have uh, sort of agreements, national licenses in, in most French speaking countries. But that's not the subject of, of my talk. What I want to talk to you about is well, what happens when uh, we're talking about the rest of the world. Uh, what happens to these journals, to these books published by French language academic publishers. And it's almost surprising that there is, despite the fact that French as a second or third language is less and less used all over the world, there is actually quite a dynamic community of, of people that read and use French language materials uh, at university, and that can be uh, people who are, for some reason, uh, francophone, but also students of French as a language, as a culture, French literature, and also mm -hmm. professors, researchers in fields uh, where French is one of the main languages. So I'm thinking, for example, about anthropology or linguistics, where sort of the founding, uh, the founding fathers, if you will, of, of, the, of the subject were French, uh, were French people who wrote in, uh, in French. And for this small community of, of users, small but dynamic community of users, Kern is, is quite a popular resource. But outside of that, well, what the question is for publishers, what can we do to reach an audience outside the French-speaking world? And what they came up with, what we came up with, is uh, a platform that's completely separate from the online platform where we put all the French language journals. And it's a platform that's entirely in English. And we work with uh, the editorial boards and the researchers that publish in, in quite a number of journals uh, to select articles and to select abstracts that we then translate uh, with, of course, specialized translators uh, from French to English. And uh, the idea is that French language, Francophone researchers can keep on publishing and doing their research in French, but we, we will make their research more visible by providing English mm -hmm. translations. And uh, some journals have the funding to translate all their new articles. Others try to work on a really case-by-case -case basis. Um, and the idea is that with the international edition of Kern, uh, libraries all over the world can, uh, can offer multilingual, uh, multilingual content, but that originally came from the French-speaking world. And then in, now in, in a couple of slides, I'll show you what it looks like. And I think what's really important is that you see that the French version and the English version of every journal, every article are closely linked. So you might be familiar with, uh, with the homepage of Cairn. This is what it looks like. Uh, and then at the top right of the screen, uh, there is a little link that says English. And when you click on that link, you end up on a different platform that's completely in English. You see all the subjects are in English, but the, we haven't translated, for example, the names of the, of the journals. This is something that they, we want them to retain their, their identity. And I'm going to choose uh, an, an, uh, the page of a journal so you can see what sort of information we provide. Uh, something that's really important is uh, for us, am I eight minutes up? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I'll show you the fact that, you know, we, one of the most important things for us is when we know that libraries are going to offer multilingual content is to provide context. And this context for, for, the, for journals is, you know, spending a lot of time explaining to users, this is the journal that you're going to cite. It's published by this publisher. That's the history of the publisher. The history of this journal is this and this and that. Uh, this is the editorial board. These are the subjects that they normally deal with. Uh, and something quite important as well is things like, you know, the political leanings of, of the journal. And on Cairn, you'll find, you know, journals that range from, you know, Marxism to more conservative, uh, more conservative political, economical uh, ideas. So we really thought that 
uh, providing all this context uh, to, to the users was uh, well, the key element. And well, if my eight minutes are up, I will skip through the rest of the, of the slides. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, we can ask them now or we can talk about it. I have a small table just outside the, the, the auditorium. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Jeremy.